Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on using nested if functions to calculate grades. So I have here a worksheet with fictitious data. I have participant IDs and scores, and these would be scores for a course. And then the corresponding grade that was calculated using a user-defined function. So I have a video that shows you how to do this with an if-then-else statement in VBA and another one using the select case method. But for this video I want to show you how to do it without VBA using nested if functions. So it would be helpful to show you the code used for the UDF I have up there, the user-defined function, using the if-then-else statement. You can see that it is evaluating X, which is the score here, based on this table to the right. So it's evaluating X, if it's less than 60, it's an F, and then else if, less than 70, a D, and so on, until it gets to uh, the only possibility, which would be 90 or greater, so else grade equals A. So this is what it looks like in VBA and it's organized and it's easy to read. Similarly, the select case method, which I have commented out here, you can see well organized and easy to understand where each grade comes from, how it's calculated. Now using nested if function, the nested if functions in one cell, allows a user to avoid using VBA, but the function becomes a little difficult to manage. So I'm going to show you step by step how to use it and keep track of the criteria that are being evaluated. So if we start equal sign, we'll start with the first if function. We're going to first want to evaluate the value B2, the score, in reference to the less than 60 point or the F category. So it'd be if the score is less than 60, comma, the value will be F. So in quotation marks, F. Another comma, you can see value if false. Well, in this case, that's going to be another if statement. And again, using B2, it'll be less than 70 this time, and the grade will be D. If it's less than 70, we know the grade will be D. So put in D. And again, value of false, it'll be another if statement. Since we have five levels we're evaluating here, we know we're going to need four if statements. So this is the third if statement. And the logical test here will be the score less than 80. And we know that'll be a C. So again, value of false. This will be our last if statement. So in this case, the test will be, is the score less than 90? If it is less than 90, so value if true, the score will equal B. You want this function to return B. Value of false, now the only other possibility here is A. So there's, there won't be another if statement, it will just simply be A in quotation marks. And this is an important last step here. We have to get the number of parentheses correct. And when you, as you add parentheses, you'll see the colors match up, which is helpful. But you can also count the number of parentheses, and we know we had four if statements, so there's going to be four parentheses. So it'll be one, two, three, four. And you can see it returns the same grade as did the user defined function, the one using the code from VBA. So if I were to autofill this down all the way, 
you can see that all the grades do match up. So it does give you the same result, just a different way of calculating the grade. Now let's say for instance for different courses you had different a different table for grading. For example maybe in some courses less than 65 would be an F. Or you would have 94 or 93 as the cutoff for an A. The way I have this function design it's hard-coded. The numbers 60 and 70, 80 and 90 are built right into the function. But there's another way you can do this so that you can change this table and the grades will update. So this table is easy to read. You know, less than 60, 60 to 69, it's easy to understand. But in terms of code, uh, there's a more logical way to configure it. So in this case, point 60, 70, 80, and 90. And for the points for A, you could just leave it blank or simply put 100 since it, it would normally not be possible to earn more than 100 points, say in this example. But all we really need to worry about are these first four grades. So I can modify this nested if formula and instead of 60, the score I can use to evaluate the first test here for F will be F2. Now in this case, that value is equal to 60, but now you can change it. And similarly, we can go to 70 and make that F3 and 80, F4 and 90. F5. This function will now work properly so that you can change the points and the grade will still correspond. So you could change this to a 65 and it will evaluate based on that. But you can't autofill this down because these are all relative references. So if you want to autofill this down, you want the point values to be absolute references. So I go back into the function where I have the F2 through F5. So just move to that cell location and press F4 and it puts in the dollar signs. That makes it an absolute reference. So you just do that four times. And now the function will turn the same result, but you can also autofill it. So you can see the grades are in there now. As I autofill, there's no changes. And of course this allows you to change the criteria. So I change it to just add 5 to each value. You can see some of the grades change and now they correspond to this table instead of the original 10 point scale. I hope you found this video on using nested if functions to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.